Fantastic. You know, it's a beautiful Wednesday here in uh, Shepherdstown, West Virginia. The weather is absolutely gorgeous. I couldn't be more excited to be to be alive and breathing on this fine day. Wyatt, uh, obviously a tough loss for you guys on Saturday, 24 nothing to cuts down. What did you kind of take away from it? Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, like you said, I mean, there's just not really a better way to sum it up in uh, in short words. It's a disappointing loss. Um, it's one going in that obviously I don't think we weren't picked to win uh, by by anybody going in, but uh, that didn't that didn't change the the mentality or the mindset. Uh, obviously, the culture at Shepherd is we expect to win, we plan to win. Um, everybody, everybody in the room is is there in some way, shape, or form because they're a competitor and want to win. So that hurt everybody. Um, it's not what we wanted. We, I mean, getting into the X's and O's on it, uh, we we failed to execute up front running the ball. Um, and, and, I mean, all this being said, in our struggles, a lot of credit to them. You know, they're a very, very talented team, a very good coaching staff. They come year in and year out. Uh, they're always very well coached, a disciplined team. Um, they don't really hide what they what they play. Uh, they've been doing the, the same stuff for a very long time, and they're just very good at executing it. So um, as far as us goes, like we definitely, uh, we definitely needed to be better up front and executing the run game. Um, we could have done a better job of protection as well. So big, a big chunk of it's on us. I mean, it, it, the, the blame can go a lot of different places. We turned the ball over too much as a team. Um, Coach McCook and Coach Clark, all, all of our coaches harp on that. And on the defensive side, you know, football a lot of the a lot of the time is based around turnovers. You know, if you if you can flip the game and flip the field in, in certain situations, it, it, it carries a huge impact. Uh, not just like physically and literally on the game, but momentum-wise as well. Uh, it, can, it can take the air out of the team when you do that. So, uh, And our defense gave us opportunities. I thought our defense played extremely well. And then they gave us opportunities that uh, we were we were incapable of executing and finishing. And, I mean, yeah, it, 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 all of this is, a, is dressing up the fact that it was one of the – it was the first, I think, shutout that Shepard has experienced in 24 years or so. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's it, – it's rough. It's rough across the board. There's a lot of stuff that we need to be better at. There's stuff that, uh, that I mean, I, I take I hold my hand up accountability responsible for, for a lot of it as well as being a leader on this offensive line unit. Uh, we need to, we need to execute better. So, um, there's three games left. There's not a whole lot of, there's not a whole lot of, uh, ambition or goals left on our, on our board for us that we can still make. But all of that being said, the, the, reason we're here even if it is to win right it, it, at the end of the day the base meaning for us as men playing the game that we love is to go out there and play the game that we love so um the mentality going forward is is to to right the wrongs you know fix the ship win out um and and turn this turn this program around and get it and get it back where it was uh a couple years ago when when we were all having fun and singing and dancing, you know, so, um, but it, it's doing it for, for the, for the right reasons, you know, just doing it for the love of the game, uh, playing for pride. And, uh, I think, I think that that message has hit home. I think that the team is reunited, uh, practice the last two days has been electric. It's a lot of competition. There's blood back in the water. People are fighting for spots. People want to play. Uh, and I think, I think that it's going to help. I think it's going to help remedy this. And I know that with everything I just said, I just probably talked for six minutes in it and it wasn't even really, I got away from the question, but I feel that that's just, that's where my mind goes when I think about, when I think about that game with Kutztown is, uh, is I've already spent the last three days licking my wounds and feeling bad. And, and, uh, now it's about right in the ship and getting, getting this thing back on course. And, and even though there's not a lot of external motivation to do it, Right, because there's not a lot of championships available. There's not a lot of, of good things that can happen to us at this point in the season. The the reason to do it is just because we should, and it's the right thing to do, and it's why we all signed on to play this game and, and come here and, and perform at Ram Stadium. So, yeah, and again, I'm sorry. I know I just rambled. No worries. You kind of touched on the question that I was uh, going towards here next for you and what has been the response from the leadership and it trickles down to the rest of the group after this loss uh from what you've seen so far this week yeah uh i I think that that is yeah i feel like what i said is kind of a big chunk of it um the key is i mean a lot of the guys you know uh like coaches made a big emphasis like 
dudes like me, dudes like James Bell, uh, dudes like Matt Bednarski, you know, uh, the guys that are, it's our senior night, our senior day coming up here Saturday. So, so coaches made a big emphasis, obviously, to the young guys for playing for us, uh, which I think motivates them because they, they, they see the sacrifices that dudes like Matt have made and, and, and just all of us in general, right, and being here. Um, but again, I think the bigger, the bigger emphasis, the bigger point being driven home to the guys is that, uh, is trying to trying to again bring bring the bring the 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 whole team back to what it was. You know what I mean? Bringing the energy back, getting it getting it back where it's supposed to be. Um, and then I think we're, so far we've done a good we've done a very good job of doing it the first part of this week. Uh, but it's not an easy task, and it can't it can't be just the first part of this week. It has to be the rest of this week, the rest of next week, and the week after that. You know, because uh, it never stops. It's like everything else in life. You just got to keep going. You got to keep fighting through it. Uh, and that's that's really I think that's the message that we're trying to send down to these to these dudes is that. Even when it feels like there's nothing left to fight for, um, those are the moments that you, that you as a man, need to just you gotta you gotta nut up, show up to work, and, and get the job done anyway. Why? What's that like? Kind of just you mentioned playing for the love of the game, and, and obviously at, at D two, you know, there, there's limited resources. It's not the same as playing at a Division one level when there's a lot more stuff given to the athletes and. and a lot more benefits, I guess, to being out there outside of just loving football because you have those outliers like Tyson Beijing, but most guys aren't going to play at the next level after this. This is the last kind of chance to enjoy football. For you guys, like you said, you know, it doesn't really look like there'll be much after these three games, but you still have that love for football and has that kind of in, in some ways brought a new energy to the team knowing that there's no real pressure from here on out but obviously you want that pressure, but um, you still have that love for football, and that's really why you're all there. Yeah, so I, I think that uh, to, to, to answer that, I think what you just said is the, the, it's like what it is, that playing for the love of the game, that playing for pride, it, it, it's putting pressure where there is no pressure because you're right. Like exactly what I said, there's no, there's no real end goal for us at this point. Like even if we went out, Nothing is promised. It would take it would take an, an extremely crazy miracle for them to, to select us. I feel like that's my personal opinion. I know some people feel otherwise. Whatever. Um, but my, that being said, uh, there's no pressure. There's no real literal pressure on us in this situation. So that whole playing for the love of the game, uh, that whole playing for pride is saying, no, there is pressure because we've already lost three times this year in a program where that's typically all you're ever going to lose, and that's like a maximum. That's a high loss year is three losses. And we got three games left to go, which means we need to be perfect for the sake of the, for the, sake of the record, for the sake of the name on the front of the jersey. Um, so, so that's a big piece of it. And then, and then on a personal level, right, uh, as far as, as what that message is and, and, and trying to explain to the young guys of what that means. I mean, to me, it's like it's scout team football. You know, it, it's the dudes on scout. It's, it's the guys that are playing. They're playing every snap for the love of the game. They're playing like they're, no one is ever out there in the stands watching these dudes practice. But they go out there and they're still playing the same game that I play on Saturday in front of everybody, right? So that to me, I've always said scout team is the epitome of love of the game football. And, and it's just it's doing it because, it, like, I mean, I have three weeks of this left for the rest of my life, and then I'll never be able. There's no, there's no setting in the in the real world, fellas, where I'm going to be able to snatch somebody's hands down, throw their face on the turf, put all my weight on them, and step over them. You know, like that just doesn't exist. Uh, so, in that sense, you have to enjoy this game while you, while you're still able to play it, because there's not going to be a lot of situations outside of outside of the next three weeks for the rest of my life personally that I'm going to be able to, to behave and maneuver the way not that I, that I do, not just on the field, but off it as well, because how you play on the field affects everything you do in life. Um, so in, in that sense, you know, it, it's not taking for granted the, the little time that everybody is, is able to play this game. You know, it, it's like that old money ball quote, you know, that we're, we're playing a children's game. I'm 22 years old and I'm playing a kid's game. Everybody gets told to stop at some point. But it, it, and it's all just about when your turn is, right? And my turn's coming around the bend. So the message to these guys is, especially the dudes that still have three years, four years left to go, is to learn to play every snap like it's for the Super Bowl. Learn to play every single play in practice 
as hard as you should be playing in the game so that the games become easier. And that's, I mean, that's, uh, that's, that's how you become great. I feel like anyway. Um, and I think that that's, that's something that we need to, uh, I think that that's a culture that was here when, when one of my good buddies Tyson was here, I think that he was a huge piece of embedding that culture. And I think somewhere along the way, uh, we, we lost pieces of that. And, and that's the part where I say, I think that that's on people like me. And I put my hand up and say that I should have, I think I should have been better at, at instituting and maintaining that culture. Because I think, I think where we've let that slip is the trickle down effect that causes a lot of our problems. So, um, that, that really, I think sums it up. And again, I know I'm in a rambling mood, but I just, these questions are, they're good. And I'm, and I'm running out of weeks with you boys. You know what I'm saying? It all, it all is, uh, so it all it all circles together. This week, home game, Bloomsburg. What's going through your mind about this matchup? Yeah, and I mean that's the other thing, right? They talk about it all coming full circle. What better what better team to have this to have this come to come to God moment with? You know what I mean? It's it, it, the team that uh, put us in a terrible spot last year and sent us to another region. So um, we're all really excited. Where we want to get we want to get our our. Uh, a win back on them because they stole one on us last year when we went to their to their uh, to their spot. So, and all of that with it being senior night, with us be having a really good first two days of practice and, and, and getting this thing back on where it's supposed to be going. Uh, I'm excited. I'm ready to roll. Um, I think I think the the team is excited, and we we want we want to go out there and right all of our wrongs. So uh, I'm I'm hoping that we uh, that we are as prepared as we feel and that we can get out there and execute at a high level against those cats. But they are a good team. You know, and, that, and that's the other thing, too, is it's not going to be an easy road. A lot of these teams, it's not like we're playing the, the, the teams of years past. You know, a lot of these teams have stepped up. And not only that, they play us harder. And they, now they know that there's blood in the water because there's already three losses. So we are prepared to see a very good Bloomsburg team. Um, but, but like I said, it's, it's – uh, I think our desire, our desire to get our win back and to turn this thing around, is, is going to hopefully be stronger than than whatever that gets off that bus. Wyatt, senior day. Obviously, it's your last home game, most likely at Ram Stadium. So, uh, what does that mean to you? And, and what are some things, I guess, maybe that you're looking forward to about about it? But also, what are, I guess, some maybe some fears, I guess, or the fact that it is coming to an end. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's bittersweet. Um, I think that as far as like, obviously, there's there's to me, uh, it's kind of to piggyback on what I just said, or, or like a couple minutes ago. Um, it, it's about love of the game. So where you play shouldn't shouldn't really be a huge factor in um, in, in how you view the game of football. But that said, it, it's Ram Stadium has been an amazing and amazing piece of my career um it's been it's been an absolute pleasure pleasure to play there and to have uh, all of the support and stuff that the that the community around here brings um it, it's it's going to be an extremely an extremely sad feeling you know knowing that it, it'll be the last time that i get to go out there and and play on saturday in front of in front of that community that's more what it's about than in the actual place itself because I mean, I'll still get two more weeks of practicing hard on that same turf. So that that fortunately doesn't go away, and it won't hit me as hard then. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is it is going to be it's going to be tough in that sense because it, there and like I said, there's nothing like it. There's not going to be a whole lot of situations in the real world either where you're you're standing on a stage or field or platform in front of that many people performing in something that you devoted all of this time and, and energy to, to to be better at and uh, and better yourself through. So, um, it'll it'll definitely be emotional. But all that said, I'm, I mean, I, it's it's still an exciting day. Uh, both of my brothers are coming to play. It's going to be the first time in a long time that both of them will watch me play uh, play football. So I'm excited for that. And um, yeah, it's it's going to be it's going to be a good day. All right, Wyatt. Hopefully, it ends with a win as well. As always, we appreciate the time, man. I appreciate you guys, and I, I hope you guys have a blessed rest of your day. Thanks, Wyatt. You as well. Thank you, Wyatt. Yes, sir.